Hallelujah. Amen. Good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Good to have you all here today. And uh, we're here just to lift up the Lord and magnify Him and glorify Him. Um, we've got uh, some people that are still out of town. As you can see, Pastor um, Ramey's not here. Uh, hopefully he'll be back next week, I believe. Um, some people have been asking me. Um, never know, but <laughs> I know he should be home next week. But uh, we're glad you're here. I know some other people are out of town. I'm glad to have uh, Tim and his mom here today. I know they just got in yesterday, so uh, good to have Caleb back, amen, and Amanda, and others that have maybe been gone away, but we're glad they're back. And uh, we do have a few, uh, got some prayer requests that are in the bulletin, some new ones. I do want to mention, um, please continue to pray for uh, Gina and her family. Uh, her stepfather passed away a few days ago, and um, we want to keep him in our prayers, them in our prayers. Uh, in the bulletin, there's a time for viewing and a service that's going to be held at Michigan Memorial on Tuesday. So if you're able to go, um, I'm sure uh, the support uh, would be appreciated and the love. But most of all, the prayers. Amen. Gina's Amen. mom's going to be having surgery this upcoming week. So we want to keep her in our prayers. Her daughter, uh, we remember her in our prayers as well. Um, a lot of people have prayers, amen, and prayer requests, so we want to remember all of them today. Um, anyone got a prayer request this morning? Maybe unspoken, spoken, amen, I do, amen. So uh, before we get going any further here, I just want to go to the Lord in prayer and uh, invite him into our service today. Father, we love you. We thank you for this opportunity to be in your house, yes. to glorify and magnify you and all that we do. We want you to be glorified and to worship and the praise, Lord, I pray, God, that we'd enter into your courts with thanksgiving and into your place with praise this morning, God. And, Father, give us hearts to worship you and ears to hear your word this morning as well, God. We want you to be seen and heard by those that are watching us by Facebook or here in this service, Lord. We want you to be glorified and magnified in this house, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, amen. I want to thank the Lord for the new sign outside. I don't know if you see it or not, but praise the Lord. If you drive by here at nighttime, it's, it lights up and it's really nice. You can see it quite a ways also. I want to say thank you, Lord, amen, for our yeah. new sign and uh, for that going on. Good morning, Sister Lois. We love you. And we pray that whoever else is watching us, you're blessed this morning as well, amen. I let the worship team do what they do, amen. I'm part of it, but you can stand with us if you want, or you can sit and worship. Lord, if you choose to worship, is your way to worship. I'm not going to tell you how to do it. How lovely is your dwelling place.
Oh 
break, give him some break.
told you a few weeks ago I did a funeral and I just felt led by the Lord to uh, take some with me and hand them out. And I had a few of those people tell me how much they were blessed by that CD. So praise God. Amen. Amen. You know, what we do here is perfectly changing people's lives, challenging people to draw closer to God, encouraging people to, you know, that's, we're not up here to uh, perform, put on a concert. Um, we're here to glorify and magnify the Lord. Amen. And if, if it enters us into a place where we can feel his presence. Um, that's wonderful. And that's what we need more than anything in this time that we're living in. And, uh, I just, I'm thankful to be here at the house of the Lord. Uh, amen, are you? Amen. amen. Come on, I need some feedback here. Amen. amen. Glad to get up this morning. Glad I had lungs in my breath. We sang that. Thank you, Lord, for the, the breath I have in my lungs. Uh, eyes open up and look around and hear the birds outside and just, it's a blessing to be in the house of the Lord, to be a child of God in the day and age we live in. It's it's exciting, and it's, uh, you know, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hopefully share about that this morning, but um, I feel like more than ever, the Lord is calling us to stand up, the body of Christ, to make a stand. Amen. Do you believe that? Yes. I think we're living in a day and age that is so much going on around us, and you know, it's not a time for Christians to shrink back. You know, we're not to be arrogant about it, but we're supposed to stand up for what we believe, amen, and yeah. uh, defend the faith. I'm going to get ahead of myself here, but and proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ, amen? amen. So, you know, that's what I've been feeling in my spirit. I, you know, all week just praying about what God would want me to share. Even here early this morning, I felt God's presence and feeling this touch. And, you know, I just want to say, you know, I pray, you know, um, I'm not looking for the accolades of men. I'm looking for the presence of God to touch my life. Amen. Amen. But whoever stands behind this pulpit, whatever we do, I pray you are praying for us, whether it's Pastor Ramey or Pastor Joel, whoever it may be, Caleb, the worshiping. We need his spirit. Amen. We need his anointing. We need his power. And, you know, sometimes people say, well, I, you know, I don't think I can get out of it. You know what? You can get out of it if you hear from God. Yeah. You pray about it, amen? And I want to question. I just want to ask that, you know, pray about it, you know. Ask God to anoint us to help us, you know, not to put a feather in our cap so that we can be what God calls us yes. to be, amen? Amen. amen. Hallelujah. That, that was all free. <laughs> but, you know, I just... Um, Pastor Joe asked me, and I'm not one. I'm, I'm trying to get better. He says, you got, you got some notes you want me to share on the screen? I said, I do, Joe, but I don't know if I'm going to go right to them or not or when I'm going to get to them. So it might be kind of hard for you to keep up because sometimes I don't always go there. Amen? So uh, you just follow along with me um, and see where God is going to take us this morning. Amen? Amen. <laughs> but, Father, we just... Go with me in prayer. Father, we love you. And we thank you for your presence. Thank you for the worship, Lord, that we had here today. Thank you for those that come and want to lift up their instruments and give you praise and yes. glory. Oh, God, we're doing it for you, Lord. And, Father, we thank you for what you've given us, God. And I pray today, God, as we are here in this church gathering, God, whether we're sitting here or those watching us by Facebook, Oh, God, as you've been pricking my heart, Lord, this week, God, about making a stand, Lord. And Father, about proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ, Lord. And Father, for standing up for truth and righteousness, God. And a world that seems to be falling apart all around us, God. People are hurting. People are dying, God. People are crying out, oh, God. And we, as men and women of God, we must stand up. Yes. We must make a stand. Oh, God, fill us hearts with boldness. Fill us with desire, God. Give us a heart to see lost people suffering and dying around us, oh, God. And may we have an answer, oh, God, for the reason of our faith, oh, God. May we show something in us, God, that would cause people to draw near to you, Lord. Yes. Whether we're home, whether we're far away, whether we're on vacation, oh, God, may we not forget who we are in you, Lord. We are the representation of Jesus Christ upon this earth. Yes. Father, we have a job to do. We have a responsibility to do. God, we need your spirit. We need your anointing. 
We need your presence and we need your power, Lord. I pray that those that are watching us today, God, whoever they are, Lord, wherever we're at, Lord, I pray you'd grab their hearts, yeah. prick them, God, and show them, Lord, the only life, the only life worth living is a life in Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, I pray today, Lord, in Jesus' name, Lord, let us get our focus on you today, Lord. Yes. Our focus on eternity, God. Yes. In Jesus' precious name, I thank you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. I, you know, I, I just I just want to go here. You know, this past week, I read something I came across on the news. You know, it was, what was it, Friday, St. Patrick's Day. You know, um, you know, everybody dresses up in green. And I, I know, I, Debbie Downer. I don't want to be a Debbie Downer. I, I want to be a Jesus lifter upper. Amen? Amen. But, you know, I heard some statistics driving Friday that startled me. It said that, now, if you drink, whatever, that's your prerogative. And that's, you know what? God deals with us all about our things, right? I'm, what I'm, I'm not so much pointing at alcohol this morning or anything else. I'm just wanting to point that Jesus Christ is the same today, yesterday, and tomorrow. He's still the answer for the world. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And he said that it was the most beer-drinking day of the year. Now I looked up the most drinking day of the year, and believe it or not, it was the uh, it was Thanksgiving Eve, yep. and then the day after that was Christmas. I thought, how pathetic! And then it went on to say that over, believe it or not, over seven billion dollars were going to spend on booze on Friday. Seven billion dollars. And I thought, I had my day there, I had my time there, but I'm going to be honest with you, it didn't do nothing for me. Amen. It didn't satisfy me. People don't even know what, you know, I read about, you know, so I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. Help me, Jesus, right? I'm not trying, to, Lord, Father, I'm not trying to criticize nobody. I'm not trying to psychoanalyze anybody. If anyone does any, I pray to God, it is the Holy Spirit, gets a hold of our hearts and shakes us. Amen. And draws us near to Him. Amen. Because I was thinking about, I shared about this a, a, a few weeks ago at the prison, about the woman at the well. It wasn't so much about the well that Jesus came to. He came there for the woman. Amen. He yes. came there for the woman. Yes. People think, oh, Jesus came because he's thirsty. No, Jesus came because he wanted to minister to that lady right. that was thirsty. Yes. The lady that needed something more than what she was getting in life. And you looked at her life. She was living with all these. She'd been married to all these different people. The one she was with, she wasn't even married to. Right. Jesus, and he didn't condemn her. He just said, if you would drink from this place, yes. said, you won't thirst again. Right. Huh. Yes. Is that the message that we're preaching today? Yes. Is that what we're telling people today? That if you drink from Jesus, you won't have to drink $7 billion of alcohol <laughs> to make you feel good. Right. It's amazing. I, and I heard some statistics and I read, I even got it here, I printed it out, I'm not going to go through the whole thing, that, you know, St. Patrick wasn't even Irish. Huh. Did you know that? He was kidnapped at the age of 16 by pirates. I think I got that right. He was kidnapped. He was a British man taken to Ireland by pirates. He escaped from them and went back to Britain, gave his heart to Christ, got on fire. He wasn't even a Catholic. I'm sorry. He didn't wear green. He was a man of God on fire for the Lord that God birthed in him a desire to go where? back to where he was held captive. Oh. And he went back there and evangelized. And I read that over 135,000 people in one summer came to Jesus and got baptized. Amen. Now you want to know about St. Patrick? That's the dude I read about. Amen. You can look it up. It's on Google. Amen. Sorry to bust your bubble. The four-leaf clover, and it's not luck. I heard that he had said it represented the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. There ain't no luck in a clover. There ain't no luck in anything. There ain't no luck in a rabbit's foot. There ain't no luck in it. The only foot that can bless you and keep you is Jesus. Amen. He's a good. He's got a good luck charm. You can't wear him around your neck. You can't put him all over your house and hang up pictures and hang up statues. And people put this stuff in their yard. They think they're going to chase away the whatever superstitious cats or whatever. I'm telling you, what you need is the blood of Jesus inside of your life. That's what's going to set the captives free. Hocus pocus, whatever. I, I ain't falling for it. It ain't in the Bible. It ain't. We've too long, we've saturated everything, but what 
Jesus is. And I, and I just, you know what? I was driving and it angered me when I, run, I heard about it. Then I started reading about this college. It was on MSNBC. It said, I had a St. Patrick's Day weekend. This was, they're, they're getting ready now for St. Pat. I know a bunch of people are probably turning me off with their listening. Say it. <laughs> oh, well. Praise God. I had a St. Patrick's Day weekend. Officials at a Massachusetts university are discouraging students from participating in the latest college drinking trend known as Borg. Anyone heard of that? I have. Big new, big new drinking thing that's going on at the college. Now this happened before St. Patrick's Day because just like most of those things that happen is, you know, they're getting ready for that day. So they're going to start partying ahead of time. I know, I'm, I'm I'm not against whatever. You know, I, I, Jesus Christ is the only one that can give you joy, peace, happiness, and satisfaction. Amen. I'm not just saying it because I have to say it. I'm saying it because I've lived it. That's right. I've lived it. I've believed it. I've received it. Haven't you? Amen. Well, I got a witness in this house? Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. I know. Amen. Maybe you're watching and say, amen. Been there, done that, brother. I ain't going back. Right. Amen. Amen. It said here, I know, I'm just going to read this. The Boston University warning comes 10 days after, 10 days after, 28 calls from ambulances were made off campus parties at the University of Massachusetts, Amherst. Due to the school intoxication from Borg's, plastic gallon jugs usually prepared by the drinker that contain hard alcohol, water, caffeine, and electrolytes, the town of Amherst and UM Massachusetts Amherst officials reported that ambulance, that ambulance support provided prompt and essential service in response to a significant number of alcohol intoxications related to off-camp students gathering on March 4th, according to the press release. It said that the Amherst noted that the Amherst Fire Department handled Request of 28 ambulance transport with a task force of an additional resources. None of the cases were life threatening. Oh, oh, thank God. Yes, thank God. But, you know, so they're preparing for something bigger to come for St. Patrick's Day. But they had over 28 cases already of an intoxication of people being rushed off to the ambulance to a hospital. Now, none of them died. Thank God. Their response was, we have to get better, we have to better prepare the students on how to uh, use the boards. They plan to assess the situation, consider steps to improve alcohol education, intervention, and commitment with the students and family. I read that and I thought, you know what the best prevention is? Tell them about Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. But, no, we're gonna, I, and there's more to that. They were going to tell them how much to put in the bottle and not to put so much caffeine in the bottle. Like, no, 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 no. That, that ain't what you tell them. Amen. You tell them about Jesus. Oh, you know, I, I, I wrote this down here, and I was reading this, and I, and I wrote this down. I said, Lord, send a revival to that college. Amen. Like the revival that's been going on with these young people. People coming to the altar, broken before God, lives being changed, family members coming and praying with them, seeing their sons and daughters taken out of bondage by things that they can never understand what was going on, but God's rescuing them. Oh, thank God, I'm going to put the water on that fire, amen? Lord, fan the flame of revival. Yes. Fan the flame of revival, God. Yes. I'm just, well, I don't know if that's from God. Well, you, you know what? I'm not going to go there. If, it's if people are repenting, people are crying out to God, young people are coming to Jesus, oh, thank God I'm not reading about them in this article, amen? amen. Let the fire go, Lord. Let it get on all the campuses. Let it touch our young people. Let it saturate them. Let them see what Jesus is all about. Amen. Let them see what Jesus... I know, I was thinking, my wife and I went and seen that. I want to commend you. If you want to go, it's a great movie. It's called The Jesus Revolution. Anyone heard about it? Great. Anyone seen it? No. I wonder if she was. It's, it's okay. You can go. It's whatever. G. Whatever. <laughs> it's a good movie. It's a gospel movie. It's about a movement that took place in the early 70s and how God swept through California and all these young people <clears throat> and how they all got saved. And there was a radical change. A radical change. 
They got off LSD and got off all these different things that were going on. It was really realistic. It showed some of them OD and then almost dying, didn't it? And they gave, they gave their hearts to Jesus and, and, and how you know, one of the young men there actually is, is now Greg Laurie. Anyone know about Greg Laurie? He runs Harvest Ministry and he traveled with Billy Grant for many years. And as I was thinking about this movie, because I kind of was on the court end of that move. I kind of was on the end of that. In the late 70s, that was kind of that, that movement spread all across America. It really did. And there was thousands and thousands of, you know, people getting changed and giving their hearts to Jesus. And coffee houses were opened up. And people were hungry for God and drawn close to the Lord. And I've seen several people that have commented about the movie on Facebook. And how, man, I went once. You ought to go, to go see it. Then I've seen someone comment and say, I went four or five times. Oh, you've got to go see it. And I thought to myself, Lord, I thank you, God, that you're doing something in their hearts to stir them up. But God, let it not just be about a past memory. Let it not just be about, oh, what I experienced in that time. But God, let that fire rekindle again. Amen? Amen. I, I think the Holy Ghost wants to move in all of us. Yes. Not just the old young people. Amen. Not some older people. All, all those folks. We need to get moving in the Holy Spirit ourselves. Amen. We need a little ruffling fire underneath us a little bit. Yes. We need to be a little contagious to people out here that are hurting and dying. Yes. That are struggling. That are depressed. I, I thought about this. I thought, you know, I've been there, done that. I know none of them are happy. They're not. There's, there's nothing fulfilling in what they're doing. I've been there. I've done that. I'm getting ahead of myself here. Maybe a little bit, maybe not. I don't know. I'm going to look at a scripture here in Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1, if you want to turn there with me. Paul speaking here, and in verse 16, he said, For I am not ashamed, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Whew. He said, For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. It is the power of God. Hallelujah. He said, I am not ashamed. Are you ashamed of the gospel today? I know I'm not asking you. You know, it's a, it's a it's a hypothetical question, okay? But sometimes, you know, maybe we've been in positions where we were ashamed. We didn't speak up like we should. We didn't say maybe something when we should. But I'm telling you, it's a time when Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And what really stuck out to me is this verse that he says, it is the power of God. This good news that we share, Paul said, it is the power. And that word power is the same word that's used when the Holy Ghost fell down. It's dynamite, dunamis, power. When we share the gospel of Jesus Christ, I believe that Paul said, I'm not ashamed of it. Where's the power of God unto salvation? How did you change, Pastor Chris? By the power of Jesus Christ unto salvation. How does this world change? How does this, this situation? It's by the power of God. Amen. It's by the Spirit of God that breaks the yokes, breaks the chains of darkness. Hallelujah. It's by the power of God that sets the captives free. I'm not upset. It. It's by the power of God that keeps us going every single day in God. Amen? Amen. I'm not ashamed of it. Lord, forgive me for times I maybe I had been. I had not spoke up. I believe there's times where you should and shouldn't say something for the Lord. He'll, he'll speak to your heart about that. Amen. But I do believe that we ought to be ready to give an account of the word of God that's been given to us. Amen. Amen. That we should be able to show and study ourselves approved. That's what Paul said. To show yourself to prove. A workman that needeth not to what? Be ashamed. I don't want to be ashamed. I know, but I don't want to turn around and say, I just don't know. I don't, I don't want to speak up. I don't want to offend nobody. I don't want to speak out about, you know, the abortion issue. I might offend some people. I don't want to say anything about this or that. You know, if the Holy Spirit puts your heart to say, say it. Amen. We need some yes men in the house of God. Yeah. We need some people that will stand up in the, in the streets, in the workplace, and wherever you're at, and say, no, this is not of God. This is, not what God's, this is not what God's word says. There's so much going on around us. So much erroneous doctrine. So much false teaching. 
People saying there is no hell, there is no heaven, there you can taste your you can be whatever you want to be. I, I want to be a, a, a doggy this week. I, I, I want to be a, I want to be a monkey next year. <laughs> no, God created you in the likeness of His image. He created man and female after his likeness. Amen? Oh, Brother Chris, you're just preaching. So I, no, I, this is where I'm at. God, help me this morning. Amen. Help me, God. Help me, Lord. The world's fading fastly in an abyss of madness. Do you not see it? I do. Do you not see it seemingly out of control? I see, I've done funerals lately. I've been seeing more young people passing away and dying from things they never should have. What's taking place? The devil's ripping them off and lying to them. Oh, it's time for the church to get back to being the church. Amen? Amen. It's time for the church to get back to standing up for Christ. Yes. Making a stand and proclaiming God. I was thinking about this the other week. I was driving down the road, and I haven't shared this story. I guess I'm going to share it now. And I thought to myself this week, Lord, I've heard, I felt the Holy Spirit say this to me. Make each moment count. Make each moment count. Yes. A few weeks ago, I was, my daughter was telling town the day she was leaving. I was driving down Telegraph Road, headed home. My wife, I, my wife knows I shared it with my daughter, I shared it with Pastor Ron. And as I'm driving down Telegraph Road, I'm in the far right lane, and there's these cars swerving out of the middle lane. They're swerving, 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 swerving. And as I'm getting closer, I thought there was an animal, a deer in the road. And I'm looking, and I'm, I'm like, trying to, what is, what's going on? And some eyes are beeping their horn. And as I get closer and closer, it's not an animal. It's a person walking down the middle of Telegraph Road. And as I got up next to her, she's just walking with the traffic and semis are beeping the horn and people are hollering at her. I turned my window down and I said, what are you doing? And she just kept on walking, just kept on walking. And I, my heart broke instantly. People were upset because she was, I, can you imagine people were upset because she was in their way? They were slowing them down to get to McDonald's. How horrific! And then, I know I'm, I'm making it, but that's what it seemed like. And you know, as she was walking, I, I I hollered out to her. And I said, "What are you doing?" And she wouldn't answer me. She just kept walking. And I said, and then I grabbed my phone. And I'm trying to dial nine one one. I guess you know I'm not trying to put it back. I could have speeded up like everyone else. And, Too bad to be her. I ain't got time. But I heard the Holy Spirit tell her. God loves her. Tell her. God cares for her. So I screamed it as loud as I I said, hey, I just want you to know that God cares for you. Amen. God loves you. Amen. God, he's got a plan for you. Amen. And she just kept on walking and she stopped and started walking the other way towards the traffic. I said, this ain't good. I put on my brakes, I'm praying, oh Jesus, help me to figure out what to do. I, help me, Lord, stop her in Jesus' name. Sometimes prayer is the best thing is the only thing, amen? amen. God, get a hold of her. And all of a sudden, as soon as I'm praying, honestly, she just turns around and starts walking back towards me. And she gets up to the van and she looks at me. She's got tears rolling down her face. She looks at me and she says, nobody cares. I don't know her for that. I said, I care. I wouldn't have stopped if I didn't care. Amen. I said, and more than that, I said, God cares for you. Because that's why I stopped. Amen. I said, if God can change your life, God can help you out. I don't know what happened. My wife said, she said a miracle. She said an angel that when I'm not saying I was an angel. But I, as I was talking to her, I know she was listening to me. And she just walked up across the, the, the telegraph road and crossed over the medium. I, don't, I called 911 when I told her what happened. But evidently she got out of the road. But it, my heart broke for her. And I thought, God, how many more people are like that out here? Wandering around, hurting inside, 
crying out for someone to show them the love of Jesus and reach out to them. I don't know what her situation was, but I prayed. I got home. I told my daughter, we prayed in the living room. She wept and cried. I said, my wife, we cried. We prayed. I haven't shared this yet, but I'm sharing it this morning because God cares for the lost world. Amen. Jesus cares for the hurting. And I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. Yes. It's got the power to change lives. Yes. The cross still must be preached today. Yes. Yeah. The cross, it's the cross where God and men were joined together. You can't take away the cross and have a gospel. Sure. You can't take away the cross and say there's salvation someplace else. Jesus said, there is, Paul said, there is no salvation in no one else. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. There is no other way to heaven except through God. And he made the cross, hallelujah. He provided the cross, the great divide, amen? amen. A cross, he, what was it? It was stretched out from heaven to humanity. God bridged the gap, amen, and gave us access, hallelujah, by his blood. By his blood. And Paul said, if we preach just the cross and not Christ risen, what hope would there be either? Ha! But we preach a Christ risen as well. Amen. We, we, we don't just preach the cross. We, we, he, yes, I see those. I was raised in that, that religion where Jesus is still on the cross. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, he's not on the cross. Yeah. He's a risen Savior. Yeah. He's a mighty Savior. Yeah. He's a powerful working Savior. I was reading in the book of, uh, you know, I was thinking of the story that, you know, I've, I've read many times. And it said somewhere, I'm not sure, but it said that in Stephen Stoning, that he quoted almost 66 verses of the Bible, of the Old Testament. And when they confronted Stephen about what he was doing, the Bible, when you read the story, it says he was a man full of the Holy Ghost. Whew, man. Full of the Holy Ghost. And what was he? He was just... Witnessing about Jesus. I'm telling you, when you stand up for Jesus, not everyone's going to like you. Not everyone's going to be attracted to you. Not everyone's going to be moved to you. But there are going to be some that are. Amen. There are going to be some that need to, need that drink of water. There's going to be some that looks in you and says, I need what you have. I need to be changed. Yeah. I'm sick of this life. I'm sick. How many people woke up the next day on Saturday and were just trying to figure out ways online to help them feel better after what they did the night before? I'm so glad I don't got to do that no more. Man, I can wake up and just, you know, I might have a, a bad hair day, but hallelujah, I don't walk by feelings, I walk by faith, amen, in the Son of God. That's what you got to do. You got to get up every day and walk by faith. The devil comes and he does lie. He knocks at your heart and he tells you, hey, you know what, you were happier when you were doing this. You were happy. No, you weren't. It's a lie from the pits of hell. No, you weren't. But if he can deceive you into thinking you were happier on that other side doing them things, he's going he's, he's gonna to entice you all he can. That's why we were talking about on Wednesday night. The Bible says to resist the devil. Resist the devil. And then what does it say again? Draw an eye to God. That's the antidote. That you just don't resist him. You resist him in Jesus' name. And then you draw an eye to the Savior. Amen? Amen. Oh, God, I need your strength today. I need your help today. I'm struggling with this temptation. Lord, you know I fell in this area. You know I'm struggling with these thoughts, God. God, I know you're dealing with me about laying this down. Oh, God, help us. If God's dealing with you about something, it's because he loves you. He wants you to get, be better in him. He wants you to have victory. He wants you to have strength. That might not be all the reasons, but that's a lot of it sometimes. Amen. I know you thought I lost where Stephen was. <laughs> How do I thank you, Lord? But when you read the book of the sixth chapter of Acts, I want to encourage you to do that. And seventh chapter of Acts. It, man, it, it, it said, pick you out some men, godly men. And then they zeroed in on this young man, Stephen. And it says he was full of the Holy Ghost, full of God's power. And he started to share his testimony and share what Jesus had done and what, who Jesus was. Right away, the crowd came against him. You know, when you start standing up for Jesus, sometimes things are going to start coming against you. It's, they are, right? You make a stand, you're going you're gonna to face some fierce waves. 
But as he was proclaiming the gospel, he was sharing it, he was standing up, he man, he won, you know, you talk about a short little jump, you know, I, I'm going to read it because I don't want to linger there too long because it's like a chapter and a half, which really isn't a lot, but when you think about what he brought up from Moses to Abraham to all the patriarchs and how God used them and God blessed them and how it was the seed that was from that lineage of David, how Jesus came onto the scene and how Jesus was going to be used in a great and mighty way. It said they gnashed their teeth at him. It said because they were smitten in their hearts. They were convicted of their sin. Oh, thank God we're convicted of sin. The Bible says that godly sorrow bringeth forth repentance. We don't get to heaven by being good. We don't get to heaven by coming to church. We don't get to heaven because of mommy and daddy and grandpa and grandma and everyone else. We get to heaven because we've been born again. Amen. We've asked Jesus to come into our hearts. We've asked him to forgive us of our sins. Sometimes we've got to ask him every single day, forgive me, God, I fail again. Amen. And he, the Bible says he's faithful and just. Forgive us all of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I know I'm going. I, that's me. I get going fast. Hallelujah. Go, 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 Christ. Hallelujah. 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 And when he spoke, man, it said that as he was standing there, they were upset. I'm, they, I, I, I just, I'm wanting to say this. The world is upset at the, the church today. Amen. The way of the world. Yes. The way of the world is upset at the church. They want us to be quiet. Yes. They want us to silence. They tried already. They did a test, I think. And I think more is, I don't want to be prophetic, but I think more is coming. I think there's a greater storm coming. I think there ever was a time for the child of God to get into the Word, to pray, to seek God, to get things right. It is today. It is today. Because this is what we got to stand on. Amen? Amen? And it says, as he was standing there, and he was, you know, proclaiming the Lord, and they started to stone him, and it said he was radiant in glory, and he looked up, and as he was standing up for Jesus, Jesus was standing up for him. Hallelujah. Woo! It said Jesus was standing up for him and he received him into his glory. I was thinking here of this verse. I want to just turn there for a minute. Hebrews <coughs> chapter 4, verse 12. For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two edged sword, piercing into the division of the soul and spirit and the joints and marrow, and the discernment of thoughts and the tents of the heart. And there is no creature hidden from his sight. But all things are naked and open to his eyes, to him in whom we must give an account. The word is powerful. Amen. Who is the word? Jesus is the word. It pricks our hearts. It challenges us. It draws us. It compels us. I just, I don't want to ahead of myself here, but I just look here at this verse here, and I was thinking, and I, I wrote this down. It says, in Jude 1, 3, it says, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write to you the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. So Jude is saying here, I was going to write about something else, but things have gotten changed. He said, and I just want to exhort you to earnestly contend for the faith. Oh, I know. I was thinking about contending. And I remember as a little boy, we watched boxing a lot. And my dad loved boxing. He just, he loved Joe Lewis and Muhammad Ali. He, my dad, he, he, he would just, we all grew up. There were seven of us boys. And we grew up in the backyard. He had, he had a, made a little ring with out of the garden hose. And we'd all go back there. He got us some boxing gloves. I'm not thinking crazy. We'd go back there and we'd box and we'd do this and that. And then one of us get a, a bloody nose or we, we'd cry because it hurt. And then, you know, my dad would wipe us off and say, you're all right. Now go hug your brother and give him a kiss. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> that's how I grew up. Well, all my brothers, that's what we did. But I remember my dad sitting there and he'd be watching some young buck, maybe that was in the Olympics. He'd look at him, he'd look at me, he'd look at my brothers, he'd say, He's a contender. He's a contender. He's a con he's he's gonna beat you. And he did. Most times my dad picked him, he picked him up. He said, That guy's gonna be there someday. 
What was it that made him want to be there so bad? His tenaciousness. Jude said, earnestly contend. Are you contending today? I, I, I look out at some of you and I, I can say, I believe maybe all of you, I hope so, pray for I, I, I know there's a lot of contenders in here. Amen. You're contending for the faith. You're standing up for the truth. You're standing upon the solid rock of Jesus Christ. Amen? I'm earnestly contending. Jude said, earnestly contend. Don't back down from it. How do you contend? You study the word of God. You read the word of God. You pray. You come to the house of the Lord. Yes. You seek God. Yes. You pray. You worship. You ask God to fill you with the Holy Spirit. Amen. You ask God to fill you with his gifts. You ask God to help you have wisdom. Have any of you prayed for wisdom? I've been praying for wisdom. God, help me to have wisdom. Yes. Help me to be a discerner of the Spirit of yes. God. Amen? Yes. Amen. Help, help me to be sensitive to the lady on the road that's ready to kill herself. Yes. Oh, God, wake us up. Let us stand up. Let us cry out and look around us and say, there's a lost world that's hurting out there. Amen. And I'm a representative of Jesus yes. Christ. How me to get myself out of the way. You know, so many times the devil uses our own selves to get ourselves in a way to miss, miss out on what God might be wanting to do. Sure. I don't want to say that's always the case, but sometimes it is. God, help me to not get my focus on me, but focus on you. Yes. They say the best thing sometimes to get yourself out of a rut is to help somebody else. I believe that's true. The best thing to just see how blessed you are is look at someone that's suffering in some mission field or that's being persecuted. And I'll guarantee you, if you really look at it, you'll say, thank you, God. Pray for them. And thank you, Lord. I'm not there. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for the blessings you've given me. Thank you, God, for what I have. Amen. We have so much and we, we give God so little praise and glory about it. But I look around and I think about all that I see and I, I think, Lord, Spurgeon said this. I'm going to close here in a minute. Spurgeon said this on 2 Timothy 3.16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. It is profitable for doctrine and reproof, for correction, instruction, and righteousness. All scripture. Now, all scripture. I heard, I heard people say, well, you know, you shouldn't preach from the Old Testament. Yes! Every page of the Old Testament was Jesus. Every chapter there was Jesus. You shouldn't be, you know. Everything okay, Joe? Yeah, go ahead. You shouldn't be so bothered with, you know, what people think about how, you know, what Jesus did. I, I, I came across this. Spurgeon said, let, let us never forget the whole Bible is inspired to be devoutly received as an infallible truth of God. Get away from this, and we have nothing left to hold by. Whatever we do, let us never give up the Bible. Those who would weaken our reverence for it are our worst enemies. Never give up. Stand up for truth. Stand up for righteousness. Stand up for what Jesus is doing today. I, I, I came across these verses here and I just wanted to share them. Because I've got some friends, i got some family that are drifting away. You got anybody that's drifting away? Drifting away. Following false religions, false teachings, false beliefs. Drifting away. I'm going to contend for the faith. I want to know what I believe. I heard someone say, well, Jesus, you don't really got to preach the Old Testament. You know, really just, you know, sh share the New Testament. I just, I, I found this on the internet, and I thought it was powerful. Jesus is in every book of the Bible. In Genesis, Jesus Christ is the seed of the woman. In Exodus, he is the Passover lamb. In Leviticus, he is the high priest. In Numbers, he is the pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. In Deuteronomy, he is the prophet like unto Moses. Whew. In Joshua, he is the commander of the Lord's army. In Judges, he is the judge and lawgiver. In Ruth, he is our kinsman and redeemer. In First and Second Samuel, he is the seed of David. King, in Kings and Chronicles, he is our reigning king. In Ezra, he is our faithful scribe. Nehemiah, he is the rebuilder of every broken thing. Amen? Amen. <laughs> 
In Esther, he is more, he is our Mordecai and advocate. In Job, he is an everlasting redeemer. In Psalms, he is our shepherd. In Proverbs, he is our wisdom. In Ecclesiastic, he is the meaning of life. In the Song of Solomon, he is a loving bridegroom. In Isaiah, he is the Prince of Peace. <laughs> I'm not done yet. Hold on. <laughs> in Jeremiah and Lamentations, he is the weeping prophet. In Ezekiel, he is the glorious Lord. In Daniel, he is the fourth man in the fiery furnace. And with you, I added that. Hallelujah. Amen. In Hosea, he is the faithful husband and married to the backslider. I put that there too. Hallelujah. In Amos, he is our burden bearer. In Obadiah, he is the judge and savior. In Jonah, he is the risen prophet and one that rescues those that have been fallen away from the Lord. In Micaiah, he is the ruler of the world from Bethlehem. In Nahum, he is our stronghold. In Habakkuk, he is the watchman. In Zephaniah, he is the mighty to save. In Haggai, he is the redeemer and the restorer. In Zechariah, he is the branch of David, one pure for us. In Malachi, he is the son of righteousness. Woo! Amen. There he is. Where is Jesus in the Old Testament? I just read him to you. He's there. He opened, God opened my spiritual eyes. You want me to share a little bit what he's in the New Testament? Just hold on. In Matthew, he's the king of Jews, the Messiah, Christ, the son of the living God. In Mark, he is a servant miracle worker. In Luke, he is a baby born in the manger, the son of man. In John, he is the son of God, the living word, the truth of life. In Acts, he is the savior of the world, and I put in the Holy Ghost. In Romans, he is the justifier. In 1 Corinthians, he is the resurrection. In 2 Corinthians, he is our comforter. Hallelujah. Now I'll get someone shouting here today. In Galatians, he is our liberator. In Ephesians, he is the head of the church. In Philippians, which is Joe's favorite chapter, he is our joy. Hallelujah. In Colossians, he is the completeness and the glue that holds the world together. In First and Second Thessalonians, he is the coming king. In First and Second Timothy, he is our mediator. In Philemon, he is our benefactor. In, Philemon, in Titus, he is the blessed hope. In Hebrews, he is our perfection. Woo! Hallelujah. In James, he is the power behind our faith. In First and Second Peter, he is the chief shepherd and the chief cornerstone. In First and Second and Third John, he is the truth and everlasting life. In Jude. He is the foundation of our faith and our security. In Revelation, he is the King of Kings and the soon coming Lord. He is the first, the last, the beginning, and the end. He is the keeper of all creation, the creator of all. Someone ought to be running right about now. I'm ready to. He is, he is, he always was, and he always will be. I moved, I'm changed, I'm defeated, but never I'm done. He was bruised and brought our healing. He was pierced and it, and it eased our pain. Woo! He was persecuted and brought freedom. He was dead and it brought life. He was risen and brings power. He reigns and it brings peace. The world can't understand him. I know that. The armies can't defeat him. Amen to that. The schools can't explain him. And the leaders can't ignore him. Herod couldn't kill him. The Pharisees couldn't confuse him. And the grave couldn't hold him. Nero couldn't crush him. Hitler couldn't silence him. Other religious religions can't replace him. And the world can't explain him away. Yeah. Oh, I'm not done. Almost. Uh, he is light. Hallelujah. He is love. Hallelujah. He is longevity. Hallelujah. He is Lord. Hallelujah. I feel like I'm getting one of those southern things going on. Here. He is. Uh, he is goodness. He is kindness. He is gentleness. He is God. Hallelujah. He is holy. He is righteous. He is powerful. And he is pure. Yes. His ways are right. His word is eternal. His ways are changing. His mind is, is, is always on us. Oh, I love that. He is my redeemer and my savior. He is my God and my peace. He is my joy and my comfort. He is my Lord and he rules my life. Woo! Glory to God. Glory to God. Uh, uh, I, I can't help it. You get excited if you want. Uh, it excites me to know he's everywhere in here. He's everywhere in here. You might read it this morning and not get nothing out of it. But later on when you're driving, baby, he'll bring that scripture to your mind. Well, you say, victory is mine because of what I read this morning. You might not understand what's going on, but he speaks to us in our struggles and our storms through his word. Amen. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word never will. Come on up, man. They're coming up anyway. Get me out of here. 
Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Oh, Pastor Chris, I'm not just excited. I don't want to just be excited. I told God when I was praying this morning, God, I don't want just people to say that was a good message. I want something to stir and turn inside of us, God. Amen. Burn inside of us, God. A new desire, a new passion, a new renewal for you, Lord. Those that don't know you, that are away from you, come back to Jesus. If you've never given your heart to Jesus, today's the day. Amen. I don't know what that's all about. The Bible says, that whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I can't explain it. Jesus tried to explain it to uh, Nicodemus. He said, you know, the wind blows, it comes. He said, but you can't see it. Can you see the wind? I can't see it, but I can feel it. I felt it yesterday. I went outside, I felt it. That's the same with the Holy Spirit. You, can, you might not be able to see him, but he's real. He's moving in our hearts. He's moving in our lives. He's ministering to each and every one of us. you got a situation that you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know how to fix it. Jesus can fix it. Amen. He is the power of God. Amen. He is the power of God unto salvation. Yeah. That is our guarantee. Amen. I carry it more than I carry my wallet. I carry it more than I carry my license. I carry it, it should be carried in my heart. The devil wants to rob me of that, but I'm not going to let him do it. In Jesus' name, devil, I rebuke you. I know I gave my heart to Jesus. I am his, and I'm his child, and I belong to him. Hallelujah. I might not see the situation changing, but I know God is a God that changes situations. I might not see this mountain moving, but I know God is a God that moves mountains. Understand all the trials and tribulations in my life, but I know that God is a big God. I, I heard Pastor Chip say this. I just I need to stop. He was, and, and then with this, he was talking about this. He was telling this story about this man that was fishing, and every time he'd catch a big fish, he'd throw it back in the water. But every time he caught a smaller fish, he'd throw it in his bag in his pan. And this was going on for a little while now. He was having a good day fishing, but every time he get a big fish, he'd throw it back in the water. Finally, this gentleman was sitting next to him and said, I'm sorry, but can I ask you a question? He said, sure, what? He said, how come every time you get the big fish, you throw it back in the, the lake? But every time you get the small fish, you throw, you put it in your pan. And he said, well, you see, son, he said, I only have an eight-inch frying pan. He said, so I can only keep fish that are eight inches or under. And Tim said this. He said, the guy just looked at it like, Really? But he was saying, we need a big God. A big God that can put big things in his pan. Amen? Amen. Don't limit God in what he can do. Don't limit God in your life. Amen. Oh, there's been a day that doesn't go by that I feel the Holy Spirit drawing me closer. Amen. I want revival to come. Amen. Not just out there and here. Real revival. What is real revival? It starts with repentance. It starts with brokenness. It starts with surrender. It starts with coming back yes. to where you once were with God or maybe where you need to be with God. That's revival. And then from that, God can push you forward and do amazing things. I just know God is moving in this time. Amen. Amen. I feel Him moving in this time. He's compelling us. I, I, I told you, I was saying that back. moment situations. I had a moment situation. I felt like I should have stopped longer. The girl went across the road. I, I, I wish I could have did more. It was my moment. You know what God said? You get a moment. Yes. Sometimes that's all you get. Yeah. Use the most of that moment. Amen. Use Amen. the most yeah. of the moment. Don't let the moment slip by. Plant that seed. Plant that seed. Yes. That might have been what I said. That might have made that girl, that my wife said, that made that girl yes. go across the road. Yeah. Plant and fight at the church. Yeah. Tell them about Jesus. Amen. Show them the love of God. That's right. Constrain them. Be a contender of the faith. Yes. Be a contender. Don't be a bystander. Amen. Don't just cheer me on. Get up here with me. Help me fight. Amen. Help me fight. That's right. Amen. Help me to fight this good fight. I'm counting on you. I see contenders. I, I don't want to name them. I see contenders in here. I, I, I got to say, Roger, to me, you're a young contender. I see it. I, I call him out. I say, that's a contender, God. I'm not pre 
Chapman in the 90 Let's contender. God, help him. He's lighting the roads. He's hungry for God. Oh, I remember that. Remember, can't get enough books. Can't get enough Bibles. Can't get enough this. Can't get, just stay close to Jesus. Don't let the fire go out, Raj. Amen. Don't let the fire go out. Fan the flame. Amen. Fan that flame. Help him to fan Amen. the flame. Amen. Oh, God. Pray for him. Yeah. Pray for all of us. Yeah. Pray for our young people. Jesus is real. Oh, I can't wait to get out of this church. It might be trying to get away, but you can't get away from the Holy Spirit. Because he never leaves us. Amen. That's my prayer. Bless you, God.
cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Lord, I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose again on the third day. And I believe you are the only way to heaven, God. And I ask you today, Lord, once again to come into my life. Let me, let you be the Lord and Savior of my life. I believe it because your word says whosoever will believe and call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So I believe it today in Jesus' name. Lord, those that are struggling with bondage and struggles, addictions, things that God, we, we don't even know, Lord, but you do. Father, oh God, I pray you deliver them today. Give them strength for the days ahead, Lord. Families that are hurting and suffering and broken over the loss of their children, God. Comfort them, God. I pray you'd be with Gina and her family, her daughter, Lord. Bring healing to that situation, God. Others, Lord. Oh God, bring revival into our hearts once again, Lord. Let it not just be a message, God, but let it take this mess and make it into a message. Take what we have, God, and use it for your glory. In Jesus' precious name, thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. 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 It's your breath. God, amen. And I just want to say that we are still having Pastor Ron's gone. I think he's supposed to be home next weekend, but don't hold me to that, okay? So I'm not exactly sure on the date. So I know I'm supposed to be the guy that knows, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know exactly. <clears throat> but we'll be here. I, I ask you to remember next Sunday is a prison yeah. ministry. And uh, that's just something that's really been burden being in my heart. I thank God for opening those doors, using Bob and others to help make that possible. And we had a great service there last month. So Brother Joe is going to be going there by himself this month. So you pray for him. He's going to be doing both services there. So um, let's pray about that this week. That's God. Help the men. Help the men. Help the poor. Find Jesus and find hope. So I just want to remind you, it's a little ways away. We'll keep you informed. But, um, <coughs> we will be having a good Friday service here. Uh, normally it's around 1 o'clock in the afternoon. So just kind of, we'll be in the bulletin coming up soon. Um, some exciting things going on. Uh, Wednesday night we have a Bible study here and prayer at 5.30 and 6.30. At the end of April, we'll be putting that in the bulletin too. So um, we're going to be joining the Grow Outreach sometimes. I've heard me mention them. They've been here before. I'm out there in the We're going to be joining them for a night of worship and praise. So, uh, they might be to put that on your calendar too. But that's the last Friday of April. But until then, stand for the Lord. Amen. Contend for Jesus this week. Amen. Oh, Bob CDs, there's plenty back here. And thank you, Brother Joe, for showing me those. But Praise the Lord. It's been wonderful to be in the house of the Lord. And, uh, am I forgetting anything, anybody? 
Sister Genus, again, we give our condolences to her um, family, the passing of her stepfather, and in the bulletin, if you're interested, um, if you're able, there's a time of the service that will be going on on Tuesday. I'm sure if you're not able to join, she understands. Just keep them in your prayers, amen, this week. Yes, Mother Joe. We need Bibles. We need Bibles, yes. I, 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 thank you, Joe. I thought of that this morning. There's that big box out there. Um, you know, we haven't done it in a while, but uh, if you, you know, whenever, if you're, when you're ever you're able to bring in a Bible, put it in there, it's going to uh, Mission Cry, which is a place in uh, Fallingville, Michigan, that takes and distributes Bibles all over the world to people that don't have any. So you can find really inexpensive Bibles at Ollie's. Maybe you have some at your house you haven't been using, and you know, you want to give that sword to somebody. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So get a chance to do that. I love you. It's been good to be here in the house of the Lord. I'm going to ask Brother Larry to close in prayer. Bless you, Brother Larry.